So before the last one, you use and. Now the second example, which is exp expressing the use of or, it says I'll go first, she'll go first, we'll go together. Now I'll go first, comma, she'll go first, or we'll go together. This is saying that only one of these options, these three options will happen at a time. Only one will happen. It's either I go first or she goes first or we go together. Okay? Still note the use of comma and the use of or before the last one. So still it's not elegant, it's not proper to keep repeating or, or, or. Just if they're all uh, together, if... If it's in the case of and and they're all expressing the same idea and they go well together, just use commas. And before the last one, you use the conjunction, okay? The same case for or. If you have uh, three or more options and you're only trying to say that only one will happen, just keep using commas and then use the conjunction or before the last sentence. A quick look at the remember box here. It's saying remember because it's expecting that you know all these things. So just to remind you, after I've gone through, you can take your time to study this box. Very important, loaded with a lot of information. Now it says, remember that a sentence with only one finite verb is a simple sentence. Okay? So in the beginning of uh, this lesson, I gave the definition of a sentence, right? Now, uh, sentences have types, which we... We should all know, I've been saying this, in, in, I've said this in the past, simple sentences, compound sentences, complex sentences, especially in our recent lesson in reading, where we dealt with uh, using relative clauses uh, to, uh, to create complex sentences. See, complex sentences. We've dealt, we've mentioned compound sentences in the past. We've also mentioned simple, okay? So what differentiates simple sentence from compound and complex is that simple contains only one finite verb. We know what a finite verb is. We dealt extensively, extensively with finite verbs in our lesson on the subjects and predicates. You remember where we dealt with finite and non-finite verbs. For a sentence to be correct, the predicate must contain at least one non uh, sorry. For a sentence to be correct, the predicate must contain at least one finite verb, okay? So just a quick reminder, we know that a finite verb, you know, those verbs you find immediately after the subject in a sentence. That is the first clue or the first tip into finding a finite verb. Finite verbs are found following, uh, found immediately after the subject in a sentence. Another clue is that we know that finite verbs can change but non-finite verbs remain the same, no matter what happens to the subject. So a finite verb can change in tense and number depending on the subject in the sentence. Alright?